Hey everyone, Robert here, writer of End of All Hope. If you enjoy this podcast but want to check out some other stuff that we produce here at Seven Lamb, maybe you want to check out Paralyzed, which is a horror fiction. It's a little bit darker in tone, and it's about nightmares becoming reality. Uh, You can check that out. It's on iTunes and Stitcher. And you can also go to 7lamb.com. That's the number 7, L-A-M-B, dot com. You can find all of our podcasts on there, including End of All Hope and Paralyzed, along with several others. Thanks. Enjoy the next episode of End of All Hope. Seven Lamb Productions presents to you End of All Hope. Season 3, Episode 7, Helping Hands. There we go. Martin climbed over the hay. He now stood next to me, revolver still in his hand. Next? There's no one else. (laughs) You sure about that? The other girl stepped forward and aimed at the lowest haystack. You'll just be wasting bullets. Madison, check it out. Okay. Just two backpacks. Okay. Madison walked back over to her friend. Time to drop the gun. Sorry, but I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry to hear that. Mark shrugged. If you want to start a firefight, by all means. (laughs) It's not going to be much of a fight. We just got ourselves out of a big mess. And the last thing I'm going to do is put myself in the same predicament. I didn't ask for your sob story. We came here to rest. That's all. Our truck broke down. Don't care. You're on our property. Let's just let them go, Stephanie. Shut it, Madison. If we wanted to steal from you, we could have done it last night. Steph, forget it. Let's just go. If those Maddie, things... enough! You forget what happened last time? But they aren't in our home, Steph. Plus, we have bigger things to worry about. Like the fence. What? Your fence is down. It's electric, right? Neither of them answered. They just stared at me with arched eyebrows. We can help. We don't need your help. Yes, you do. We all stood in awkward silence for a minute. I was surprised how reserved Mark was. I find it odd that you're offering to help rather than begging for your life right now. We already did that this week. We're not begging. We're not dropping our gun. And we're not here to cause harm. Steph, let's talk to Pops. Are you serious? Please. Fine. Go tell Pops. Are you going to be okay? I'll be fine. Don't do anything stupid, Steph. Just go. As Madison walked by, Stephanie grabbed her arm. She whispered something in her ear, then let her go. She jumped onto her horse and rode off. Why don't we all have a seat while we wait? She moved into the barn and sat on a haystack across from us. Just want you to know, you need to be careful with that thing. If you raise it at any point, I'll put one between your eyes. Shit. See, you need our help. If we help you with the fence, you can help us. You live around here. We need a truck. Maybe you can... I'm sorry. Are we negotiating right now? Even if I were to entertain this idea, it would be your help on the fence for your life, not for any goddamn truck. We will help you with the fence. What about you? I don't know how much help I'm going to be with my leg. What happened to your leg? I was shot. Can't stay off people's property, can you? We really don't mean any harm. Our truck broke down and thrashers attacked. (laughs) Ha! Thrashers? Okay. We made it out and took cover here. We had to. It's dangerous at night. Yeah, I know. We took care of a few of them last night. But they never stop. Ever since that blue crap grew outside of town, it's gotten worse. Shit, where the hell is Maddie? If you put the gun down, we can help. It's gonna take more than just us three to move that tree. We need the tractor. Then get it. Not until Maddie talks to Pops. I'm not lowering my gun. Look, they're close. 
They aren't the scary ones. Those are just the infected type. They go down quick. They aren't smart like the big ones. Those knock down the trees to get in. But your fence is down now. We'll get it back up in time. No, I don't think you will. No? No. Mark motioned past Stephanie. At the far end of the property, shriekers were making their way in. Shit! She stood and ran out of the barn. Shit, shit, shit. The fence is broken on the east side, too. Mark raised his gun and pointed it at Stephanie. She turned around and saw, You assholes! Drop the gun. They're coming this way. Yes, they are. There had to be 20 of them. They charged out of the woods and climbed over the broken fence. I'm not dropping my gun. I didn't expect you to. Do you have another one? On the horse. Ava, get it. I ran to the horse, reached in a long brown leather sheath, and pulled out a rifle. I tossed it to Mark. You gonna shoot me? Not unless you get in my way. Stephanie watched Mark shoot. She quickly raised her gun and aimed. I found another gun. A pistol. I pulled it from its holster, just as the horse started running. The creatures got close, but they never stood a chance. When they all fell, we took a moment to reload in case any more arrived. But nothing. Well, looks like the fence is still off. Steph, are you okay? We're fine. I was surprised she said we're fine, as if she was genuinely worried about our safety. <clears throat> you weren't bit, were you? I said we're fine. Madison stared at us with worried eyes. What did Pop say? Madison whispered in Stephanie's ear. That's what I thought. She turned to face us. (sighs) Care for some breakfast? We walked into an open hallway and took a few steps to the left into the dining room. There, at the far end of the red oak dining table, an old man in a wheelchair. A plate of eggs and toast in front of him. A glass of water in his hand. Ah, there they are. Guess. Ha! Really, Pops? Come, have a seat. I have plates ready in the kitchen. You know we were just attacked, right? Ah, I heard the commotion. I assume it's all settled now? But there may be more. I don't know if sitting down for some eggs and orange juice is such a good idea. Hmm. Well, we're out of orange juice. Uh, Unless you girls made a run. Jesus, relax, Steph. Pops, the fence is down. Those creatures could show up at any time. I thought you were working on getting it back up. You're not worried? Hmm, I'm not. You'll take care of it? We'll take care of it. Trees have fallen. Yeah, those creatures knocked them over. To get through. It's not hard for them to do so. We still have a lot of work to do on the fence. Your fences are electric, but how strong are they? Uh, Strong enough. Although, right now, they're used more as indicators rather than deterrents. We set up quite the rig, but let's save that discussion for a later time. I'm sure you're hungry. Sit. I'm going to make sure we don't have any more creatures lurking about. Take your sister. No. What? Madison can stay here. Can't leave you alone with... She motioned to us. Oh, I can take care of myself. It's more dangerous out there. And the fence? I told you. We'll take care of the fence soon enough. Stephanie marched out of the room with Madison in tow. Care for some breakfast? Please, sit. Mark and I gave each other a concerned look, then sat at opposite ends of the table. Let me get you some food. 
The old man with thinning hair and a mustache moved from under the table and rolled himself to the kitchen. He carried two plates in one hand and wheeled himself with the other. Here, let me help. No, no, I'm fine. Really? He slid the plates to us. Water? Yes, water. He again went to the kitchen. Mark looked down at his plate. A fork lay over the eggs and toast. Mark picked it up and moved the eggs around. Here we go. The old man came back with two glasses half full. Good, good. That girl will work Charlie to death. Charlie? Who? Uh, Her horse. Oh. She may be right. You don't want to let your guard down. Oh, she is right. Uh, We'll get to the fence. I know it's important. Now, eat. But we didn't. Mark and I stared at the food. Oh, Jesus. No, don't tell me. You're just as nervous as she is. (laughs) It ain't poisoned. We aren't trying to be rude, but we've run into some unkind people while traveling. Uh, I believe that, but that's not us. If only we could take you at your word. The old man smirked. He then grabbed his fork, reached over, and jabbed into my eggs. He then did the same for Mark's plate. He crammed the eggs into his mouth and chewed. Mm. Delicious. (laughs) Now, eat. I'll take a sip of your water, too, if you really don't trust me. No, that's okay. Good. Mark and I scarfed down our food. It was always nice to eat something that didn't come out of a can or a wrapper. The old man introduced himself. His kids called him Pops, but Mark and I could call him Teddy. I didn't realize Stephanie and Madison were sisters. Madison told me your truck broke down? Yeah, one of those creatures. Ah, the electrical pulse they emit. You've encountered it? Craziest thing, right? They just walk around, shutting things down. It's actually something in their body. We saw it. Really? Yeah. Huh. Ain't that something. The suckers got pretty close to our house a week and a half ago. Boom! Shut down everything. We run off a generator in the basement. Shut it down, and that was it. We were without power for two days. How'd you get it back up? He held up his hands and wiggled his fingers. Worked my magic. Did a bit of rewiring. Wasn't easy. Frankly, thought we were screwed. But it's back up. Problem is, it's been on the fritz. (laughs) Like me four years ago, I think it's on its last leg. Can't let those things get too close. Too close? Those things were on your property. Uh, There have been a few times, but we're working on it. It's weird, though. We've been around them before, and our vehicle didn't stall. The pulse they emit must only activate every so often. Huh. Couldn't tell ya. Does your fence really keep them away? Away? (sighs) No, but the shock scares them. As it would any animal. That's what they are. Animals. Even the infected type. It deters them long enough so we can get out there and dispose of them. And by we, I mean Stephanie and Madison. (laughs) I don't go out much, obviously. Wait, they haven't attacked your livestock? One of the big ones did. Once. Bit one of my steer. It died? Nope. It didn't? Nope. 
and it didn't turn into one of them loud infected type either. Hell, those infected type run right past the chickens and the horses and cattle and head right for our house. Right for us. Hmm. What you thinking? Nothing. I just find it odd. They only care about us. I guess so. What happens when your generator goes out? I thought it was out now. No. Fence needs rewiring. Once we remove the trees, we'll be able to get it back on. But you said the generator's on a fritz. If it goes down for good, you're really exposed then. That's right. We will. That's why I wanted to talk to you two. Madison said you were offering help uh, to remove the trees. We did offer. We didn't want any problems, and we overheard them talking about how hard moving them would be. It'll take time and could go faster with a few extra hands. We will help. Ava. Now I understand. I know you two have some place you're trying to go, but if you help us remove the trees and reestablish the fence, it'll be much appreciated. But there's some more. More? The generator is going to go out, but I know where to get another one. Not only that, I know where you can find yourselves some car batteries. Teddy leaned back into his wheelchair. There's a small town about uh, ten miles from here, over the hills. Stephanie and Madison can't get the generator themselves, but if you two were to help... I don't think so. You help them get the generator, snag a battery from the auto repair, and we can both come out ahead. Hell, I'll even help you replace the battery in your truck if you could push it here. Mark and I stared at each other. The biggest problem is, it's overrun. Not just with creatures, but that weird foliage that's been slowly creeping our way. But before you give me an answer, take your time. Discuss among yourselves. But I think we could both benefit from each other's help in this instance. (laughs) You know, you're really putting a lot of trust in us. It goes both ways. Let me know what you decide. I'm going to make some coffee. The man pulled out from the table and rolled himself into the kitchen, around the corner and out of sight. (sighs) Well... End of All Hope Written by Robert M. Lamb Edited by Issa Yazdezadeh Starring Hope Ennis as Ava Nick Engelhardt as Mark Adam Jetmore as Jay Jack Austin as Ambridge Jody Swenson as Stephanie Catabel as Madison Krista Tolley as Teddy Ariel Hack as Mia Gina Coyle as Kylie, Brett Wilkins as Travis, Gareth Thomas as Sammy, and Crystal Hall as Lane. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com, Eldritch T'Challa of Nemesis Black at ReverbNation.com slash Nemesis Black, and Amberlynn Nicole at YouTube.com slash Amberlynn Nicole. If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to rate and review. Visit www.7lamb.com for other audio dramas such as this one. This has been a Seven Lamb production.